Happy Ishtar, everybody. It's no surprise, and it's just par for the course, that today has also been named International Transgender Day of Visibility. Why would I say that that is par for the course? Well, you can shake your head, you can shrug your shoulders, you can deny it all you want, but Easter is not of God. And what you are celebrating is called Ishtar. How can I prove that? What about the bunny rabbits and the eggs? Does that in any way signify God or Christ? Can you show me in the Bible where bunny rabbits and eggs signifies Christ or God in any way, shape, or form? I'm not going to wait because I know you can't do it. Ishtar is the Mesopotamian religion, or the goddess of the Mesop- Mesopotamian, re- I can't even say the word, religion, uh, goddess of war and sexual love. Ishtar is considered a member of the special class of Mesopotamian gods called the Anunnaki. Ishtar is the Akkadian counterpart of the West Semitic goddess Astarte. Inanna, an important goddess in the Sumerian, Sumerian pantheon, came to be identified with Ishtar, but it is uncertain whether Inanna is also of Semitic origin, Semitic origin, hmm, or whether, as is more likely, her similarity to Ishtar caused the two to be identified. In the figure of Inanna, several traditions seem to have been combined. She is sometimes the daughter of the sky god, An, sometimes his wife. In other myths, she is the daughter of Nana, god of the moon, or the wind god, Enlil. In her earliest manifestation, she was associated with storehouse and thus personified as the goddess of dates, wool, meat, and grain. The storehouse gates were her emblem. She was also the goddess of rain and thunderstorms, leading her, leading to her association with An, the sky god, and was often pictured with a lion whose roar resembled thunder. The power attributed to her in war may have arisen from her connection with storms. Inanna was also a fertility figure and as goddess of the storehouse and of the bride of God, uh, Dumuzi, and I can't say that last one, who represented the growth and fecundity, and I'm sure I said that real wrong, of the date palm, she was characterized as young, beautiful, and impulsive. Never as a helpmate or mother, she is sometimes referred to as the lady of the date clusters. Ishtar's primary legacy from the Sumerian tradition is the role of fertility figure. She evolved, however, into a more complex character surrounded in myth by death and disaster, a goddess of contradictory connotations and forces, fire and fire quenching, rejoicing and tears, fair play and enmity. The Akkadian Ishtar is also, to a greater extent, an astral deity associated with the planet Venus. With Shamash, the sun god, and Sin, the moon god, she forms a secondary astral triad. In this manifestation, her symbol is a star with six, eight, or sixteen rays within a circle. As goddess of Venus, delighting in bodily love, hmm... Ishtar was the protectress of prostitutes and the patroness of the alehouse. Part of her cult worship probably included temple prostitution. Her popularity was universal in the ancient Middle East, and in many centers of worship she probably subsumed numerous local goddesses. In later myth, she was known as Queen of the Universe, taking on the powers of an Enlil and Anki. Interesting, and I will leave the links to these two uh, articles, if you will. One of them is from Britannica. I think um, that's an established source. 
and the other is Wikipedia, which is not so much. But I don't think too many people will argue that today was assigned International Transgender Day of Visibility. I'm just saying that it's par for the course. And I'm just saying you can excuse it all you want. You can shake your head. You can shrug your shoulders. But you can only slap God in the face so many times before he says enough. Shalom.